is the time. Now is the time for the flash. If we don't get that Kubo flashback next chapter, Oda, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, nigga, I'm telling you. That email, I have it locked and loaded. I have that email. It's strongly worded, too. I have it locked and loaded. We better get that flashback next chapter. It has to happen. Begging for a backstory, threatening him with strongly worded emails. Only for five chapters for me to see the beginning of my suffering. Can it be your faith in You know, there was a time where I believed I had influence. There was a time where I believed that Oda had my best interests at heart. And that's why I decided that I wanted to send him that strongly worded email. But... As I've reflected on my actions and my threats and reflected on Oda's aggressive response to my heart and my spirit and my soul and to the community, I've realized that I've won, but at what cost? This Kuma backstory has damaged me in ways that I can't imagine. You know, I've suffered heartbreak, I've suffered betrayal, I'd suffered, you know, familial issues, nothing super crazy, but you know, we all got our own traumas in the world. But what I'm reading today and over the past couple of weeks, has been nothing short of pain, suffering, and endless, endless heartache. I, I just, I just want it to end, but I don't think it's going to end. The sad part is, is I don't think it's going to end because there's still so much more to come. And I'm just praying for my heart because Lord knows as a Christian, seeing another Christian like Brother Kuma suffer in this way, it's breaking my soul. I know I just, we just need to go back and begin because for some reason I feel like we just don't understand the magnitude and the gravity of pain and suffering we're dealing with because I think all of us can agree that this is the worst and most painful sad, heartbreaking backstory we've experienced in the story. Far greater than Law, Robin, Brooke. This is terrible. You got everything. You got familial death. You got sickness, disease, slavery, racism. You got it all. It's just a gift basket of trauma and pain, and it won't end. So let's unpack it for a second. Let's start from the beginning. Let's start from the beginning, because I got my little book here. So I just want to list off to you guys where this all started, right? So we start with the perception of Kuma. We have this giant bear-like figure walking around. You know, little memes on TikTok, you know, with Doflamingo and Kuma moving around. And this dude is giant man with a Bible. And I'm thinking, man, this brother's raw. He's a giant pirate with a Bible. Like, who? what's more raw than a, an assailant with a Bible? It's like Mosgus from Berserk. So I'm interested in him. And then we then we get to Thriller Bark, and my man pulls up again with the Bible, but he's got the heavenly paws. And he's like, where do you want to go most in the world? He slaps the hell out of Perona. And then all of a sudden, they beat Moria, and, and, and then Kuma just teleports and appears. And he's like, listen, Moria's trash, but me, I'm different. So Zoro tries to run up to him with little Shishi Song Song. Kuma's like, yeah, all right, whatever. Sanji tries to kick him, breaks his leg. And then Zoro, they, he destroys the straw hat so badly. Zoro said, you know what? Forget my dreams, forget me, Hawk. And forget Sanji, because he's not losing all blue either. Take me, nigga. Please, just take me. I can't do it no more. And Kuma is like, you know what? I'm a good Christian man. The Lord believes in forgiveness. So how about this? Here's your captain's pain. Hold that. Little did we know that had symbolic meaning. And we'll get back to that. So we go through that. Nothing happens. And then after that, <laughs> it's funny, right? Nothing happens. Then we go back to Sabaudi, and he appears yet again. But as a robot, as a pacifist, because we learned he's a little bit of a robot. Again, things that need to be unpacked, like my man's an android. And everyone's scared. Kizaru's here. Big business is here. Capitalism is running amok. And Kuma just appears. The real Kuma, because we had a bunch of Kuma clones. The real Kuma appears and slaps all the straw hats away. And we think it's the most horrible event in the world. Again, context is needed. We think that's the most horrible event in the world. Oh my God, Luffy's slapping his head on the ground. Ah, free me. Why is this happening to me? Little did he know, saved again. It seems like Kuma's always been in the right since day one. Why? Because he's got a Bible in his hand, but that's not important. Let's continue with the tragic story because then we see after the time skip, there's a Kuma that protected the ship. And then we see after the time skip, we keep going on and Kuma's becoming less and less of a human. We see Yvonne Kauf's reaction to Kuma and Marine Ford. Kuma, what happened to you? What's going on, man? Everyone's worried about Kuma. And I'm just like, bro, what's up with this dude? Because he's got the rawest devil fruit in the world. He smacks people across the planet. Lord, I wish I could do that to some of the niggas I know in my life. Just ruining my day. Just boom, get out of here. Where you want to go? Bermuda Triangle. Goodbye. And then we see a scene that's really saddening. And that's where, this is where the start, this is where it started. This is where it happened. The tyrant Kuma, ultimate slave. And you see just nothing but swords and 
evil celestial dragons just riding on his back, beating him, blood everywhere. And then you and you see Sabo looking at him. And he's furious, like just full of rage. And Sabo's an angry nigga in general. But then Sabo, he's like, oh my God, look what they're doing to that kind Kuma, whatever. And they show you the smile. And we're just like, kind Kuma, what, what is this backstory? What's going on here? Little did we know that that scene it hurts so much more now with context because then we move forward and we skip through Wano, we skip through all of the whole cake island, Reverie, all of that, and we go straight to Egghead. And we see, and the key is we see Jewelry Bonnie crying after she saw Kuma. And then we go to Egghead and we see Bonnie again. And then we see the pacifistas. And then we see Vegapunk. And then we finally see this giant paw bubble full of memories of Kuma. Bonnie steps into that bubble. Two seconds later, she jumps out and is sobbing. And the only clip we see, or the only excerpt we see, is of a slave Kuma running away, beaten and bruised, screaming, I don't want to go back. I can't take it. I'd rather die. And the slaves catch him, beat him, and then go back. And I'm thinking to myself, this about to be the worst backstory I've ever seen. As an African American in this country, when the topic of slavery comes up and you see in all the slave movies and all the shows, and for anyone's family minorities that have dealt with slavery and genocide and pain and suffering you know what that looks like you don't need you can just imagine what they go through and i'm in my heart i'm like i'm about to suffer but i'm thinking oh this is about to be one piece one peak this is about to be older older backstories i smell a good backstory coming i'm thinking i'm i'm here i got my joy back i'm ready for this no no i wasn't i was not ready for this i wasn't i wasn't ready for it i wasn't because my heart wasn't prepared and I, and I slandered Oda, and I said, Oda, you do this all the time. You tease us, right? You tease us, right? You just give me the backstory, right? I need that. I need that meal, right? Just give me the backstory. I'm, look at me. I look stupid. Begging for a backstory. Threatening him with strongly worded emails. Only for five chapters for me to see the beginning of my suffering. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. This video is sponsored by Raycon. Now, normally when I'm wearing earbuds, I'm normally going to the gym, I'm going for a walk or grocery shopping, or maybe I just want to be in the zone at work. And for the most part, they've been all right. But dealing with the wiring, dealing with the random sound issues, I just can't take it anymore. So I decided to try the Everyday Earbuds by Raycon, and it was a game changer. I'm not going to lie, y'all. Uh, just the way it isolates sound, the cost efficiency, bro. Even just the presentation of it, bro. The little, I'm not gonna lie, the little, the little logo on the side, the little R. I was like, yo, I'm kind of official right now. I'm a little Hollywood. And the best part about it is just the company Raycon itself is really starting to stamp its map on the tech world. They got this faucet filter that I'm probably going to buy because Lord knows I need purified water. And they got this charging cable, a 180 charging cable that kind of that just goes back and forth. Like you got to see, you got to see what I'm saying, because it basically solves a lot of your wiring issues. But the best part about Raycon right now is that they're offering a really dope deal for Black Friday, where basically Raycon has an early Black Friday promotion across their entire site with 20 percent off everything and select products up to 50 percent off. So basically, guys if you want to get an early start on the holidays for raycon's early black friday sale today click the link in the description box below and go to buyraycon.com slash jd legend to get 20 to 50 percent off site wide if that's not a deal i don't know what it is and if you're not using this deal you're not a real rat and you're really not about the agenda like you say you do so go ahead and try raycon today i promise you you won't regret it the beginning of my pain my tears, my wailing on stream. We see Kuma's father clap and his mother captured because they're part buccaneer. Clap is a buccaneer. The wife is imprisoned by association. Little baby Kuma, giant little baby, part buccaneer. They're incarcerated, brought home to marry Joe as a slaves. The mother dies in prison. Clap is beaten and brutalized along with his son, but Clap the entire time is like, yo man, no matter what, Nika's coming, son. Your mother died. I'm sorry, but I'm here. Nika's coming. I love you, son. I'm here. I'm only going to show you the best in this horrible situation. The father took on so much weight for his baby boy. And in the moment where his son is crying in prison, he starts dancing. Don't to toe. Don't to toe, whatever it's called. And he shoot that nigga right in front of him and shut the door like nothing happened. Like he was killing a spider in the bathroom. And then Kuma's wailing and crying. Kuma's like, what, five, eight? And I'm like, man, rest in peace, clap. Pull one out for clap, but I can't take, I'm already damaged. I'm, psychologi I'm psychologically damaged because y'all know I got the heart of a father. You know I want kids. So it's for me, it's the seeing this is breaking my spirit. I can't take it no more. My heart hurts. That's only the beginning because they're enslaved. So obviously the beating and the bruising, it keeps happening. And then all of a sudden we jump to the Hunger Games. Mass incarceration, genocide, all for the 
For the love of the game? For sport? 10,000 people on God Valley hunted down for sport. And the winners get fruits. Now they're devil fruits granted, but like, think about this for a second. 10,000 niggas are set up to die for the sake of fruits. That's sick. And then you got the slaves in there. And then we get Kuma. And then we see Ginny. And then we see Yvonne Kaufa. Ginny and all her brilliance. It's just a great, great little story. We get the rocks flashback meals. I'm like, oh, the yes, I'm here. Finally, the trauma's over. No, 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 it's not. Because then after that, we see that Kuma finds one of the fruits. Takes the pawpaw fruit. We know where it comes from. And Kuma, this brave little, this brave soul, faces off against former grandpappy saint jay and says listen i'm saving as many people as i can and i'm getting out of here he took the role as the battering ram took the brunt of all the beatings for the sake of saving as many slaves and as many people as possible and to add it all to that he flies himself to a church and gives his life to the lord and dedicates his life to his work and then him and jenny are living a happy peaceful life helping the unfortunate and I'm looking at him like, what a man you raised, Clap. What a man. And he putting a good name on the Lord. I'm like, yo, this man can't get any better. Everything's great. And then the selfless act of this man, this going back to the nothing happened story with Zoro. The fact that Kuma was already doing this leagues ago, eons ago. He said, Zoro, listen, man, you... This is this is the least you can do for this captain because I've been doing this. I've been in the game. I had too much skin in the game. I've been here for a minute. So just to see Kuma take on the pain of all the elderly in Sorbet Kingdom, be a clergyman, become a pastor, just it's it's beautiful to see. It was beautiful. I'm like, oh, this man is so, too good. He's too good. Jenny, everything's great. And we see the hypocrisy and the evil of Sorbet Kingdom and them damn celestial dragons again and the monarchy and all that nonsense that we're used to in One Piece. And Kuma's like, you know what? We're going to fight back. He gets in prison. And then Dragon and Ivankov and the revolutionaries come in. And Kuma's like, you know what? We got a greater cause. Not only am I standing for the Lord, but I'm standing for the people. So he pulls up, takes control of the other half of Sorbet Kingdom. It's liberating countries all over the world, living the, fighting the good fight, living his purpose. Only for him and his wonderful woman, Jenny, who loves him dearly, to be kidnapped, taken away, forcibly married, and forced to have a kid. I don't need to spell it out for y'all, okay? I don't need to spell it out. Kuma escaped slavery with this woman. This is Kuma's closest friend. This is the one that understands Kuma the most. This is the one person that watched Kuma suffer for the sake of other people and sat there and listened and then tended to his injuries. Do you not understand what this woman was to Kuma? This woman is the ultimate ride or die. Jimmy is her. And she was kidnapped by the niggas that enslaved him, brutalized her, desecrated her, and threw her away when she got a disease and she traveled all the way back to spy her disease just to drop the child off. And you know what that baby is. I'm not going to say, but you know what it is. Kuma didn't even get to hear the words, I love you, Kuma, from her mouth. And he was left with the baby Bonnie. Oda, you are sick. You are sick. How could you do this to me? I'm getting, yo, I can't, I can't finish this video. I'm in pain. I'm in pain. I'm suffering. Yo, I'm actually, yo, I'm in, I'm mid recording. I'm actually, in, I can't take it. I can't because it's getting worse. The more I explain it, it gets worse because it doesn't stop there. Then we get baby Bonnie and Kuma, just the father of the year, just like Clap. Oh, Clap will be so proud of this nigga. I'm telling you, Clap will be so proud of Kuma, bro. He'd be so proud. And all the, just to make it worse, Bonnie gets the same disease and they're going all over the world. Oh, what do I do? What do I do? And he's like, bro, the doctor's like, your daughter's going to die at 10. Bonnie overhears that and think, oh my God, my disease is going away in the tent and he can't even have the heart to tell her. He was such a good father that he made her disease, he made it look like it was uh, something precious to her, jewelry Bonnie. He took care of his baby. He loved that girl. He loved Bonnie so much. And now he has to live with the information that she's going to die at 10? The gift that Jenny left behind? His baby girl? His daughter? And then there's still more to come? I can't finish this video. I can't do it can't do it no more. Oda, listen, I'm going to write a strongly worded email, but it's not to you. I'm writing a strongly worded email to my therapist because Lord knows I'm going to need severe trauma therapy after this because me making this video or talking about this backstory is breaking me as we speak. I'm suffering talking about this backstory. I don't have it in me no more. I'm sorry. Chat. It, it, I said chat. Comment section. Guys, who, if you're watching this video and you're feeling the pain I'm feeling, please just let me know. This is a safe space. Express your pain. And Oda, sincerely, I say this to you. You won. Okay? 
You beat me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just make it stop. Please, Oda, I'm begging you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oda, if you're seeing me, please. Please make it stop. I'm done. I can't do this video no more. I'm going to see y'all later. Goodbye. I'm out of here.